Hi, my name is Noah Mathis, and this is a video for MCDB 427, Molecular Biology at the University of Michigan. So I'm going to be discussing figures 1319 and 1320 from our textbook, Molecular Biology by Robert Weaver. Right, so what this figure is going to be is it's based primarily on an assay uh, done in 1987 by Frank Grosfeld and his lab. And so they were working with the human uh, globin gene cluster. And so they knew that when they took these genes and cloned them uh, into other organisms, they weren't expressed at full activity. But the gene, ex the gene itself was exactly the same. And so they hypothesized that something outside of the actual gene was responsible for this kind of regulation. And so to test that, they decided to perform uh, this assay, which is known as a DNA hypersensitivity assay. And so I'm going to start by talking about uh, the methods of this assay in general, and then I'll get into actually what Dr. Grosfeld and his lab did. Okay, so we're going to start with this figure here, and we're looking at an inactive and an active form of a gene. And so there's, uh, the red is the DNA, we have restriction enzyme sites here, and the blue proteins are histone proteins, uh, which the DNA is wrapped around. So in a lot of cases, active genes have these open regions uh, that are correlated with transcription, whereas the inactive genes are entirely covered by histones. So we can take advantage of that property uh, with our DNA's hypersensitivity assay. And so what we're going to do Oops. What we're going to do is we're going to add DNAs in a stoichiometric amount. And the reason for that is we want an average of one cut per piece of DNA. All right, so in this case, the DNAs is just going to run into these histone proteins, and it's not going to be able to cut the DNA. And so we're not going to get any cuts from DNAs. We'll have the same length, uh, and we'll have histone proteins all along our piece of DNA. The next step is going to be to remove those histone, histone proteins. So why do we do this? Well, the reason is we're going to be running a gel in just a second, and we want to know the exact length of our pieces of DNA. And if we have histones bound to them, we're not going to be able to know that, because that protein will, uh, will mess with the way the, the DNA runs on a gel. Of course, these uh, green arrows are going to be our restriction enzyme sites, which are still involved. So the next step after this is going to be to cut with a restriction enzyme. And so we know exactly where these sites are, these two green arrows. And so because we know where these sites are, we now know the length of this piece of DNA. It's going to be 13 kb. Okay, so our next step is going to be to hybridize uh, to a probe, which will bind right about here. It's going to be a radioactive probe, so that we can visualize this on a gel. And finally, we'll, finally we will run this on a gel. And as I'm sure you can expect, we're going to see one 13 kb band. Now, there is other DNA involved here too that's still in the, in the mixture that was lopped off by these restriction enzymes. Uh, but because we didn't bind a probe to that DNA, we're not going to be able to see it. Remember, we can only see what we probe for. So now let's consider doing the same assay with this active piece of DNA, which has an open site right here. So when we add our DNAs, it's going to do its job. It's going to cut the DNA right at that hypersensitive site, and so we'll be left with two pieces of DNA rather than one. A nice break there. Of course, at this point, our histones are still bound to the DNA, and we still, uh, we still have our restriction enzyme sites as well. So just as before, we're going to remove the protein. And we're going to get these two pieces of DNA cut in the middle where our DNAs, uh, where our DNAs cut, and we have our restriction enzyme sites. Just like before, we'll use our restriction enzymes to digest this. We still have a nice cut in the middle. Our ends. And so, for argument's sake, we're going to say that this is a 6 kb piece of DNA, and this is a 7 kb piece of DNA. Okay, so next we're going to hybridize our probe to the DNA. It's going to be the same probe as before, so it'll hybridize in the same spot. And we'll run it on a gel. And so take a second, maybe pause the video if you'd like, and think about what you think is going to show up on this gel. Well, if you said one 7 kb band, you would be absolutely right. And so what happened to the 6 kb band? Well, it's still there, and in fact it's going to be running right about here. It'll be in this assay, it'll be on this gel. However, because we didn't probe for it, we're not going to be able to see it. Remember, we can only see what we probe for. So now let's take a second and think about what conclusions we can draw from this assay.
One, we can say that in this inactive piece of DNA, there were no hypersensitive sites. The D uh, DNAs was not able to cut it, so the histones were bound pretty much uh, all along that DNA. Number two, in the active, in the active uh, piece of DNA, we do have a hypersensitive site. Okay, and finally, we can say that that hypersensitive site, we know exactly where it is now. We know where this probe binds, and we know where this restriction site is. And so because this is a 7 kb band, we can say that that hypersensitive site is 7 kb upstream of this restriction enzyme site. Okay, so this is a pretty powerful assay. We can find these hypersensitive sites in DNA, we can compare it with inactive DNA, uh, and we can tell exactly where those sites are. And so let's take a look at uh, what Frank Grosfeld and his lab did and what they came up with. So this is the gel that they ran. Before we get too into that, we're going to look at, uh, at how they got it. And so they used uh, ASP718 as their restriction enzyme and this 1.4 kb BAM Eco probe. Right, so here are our restriction enzyme sites and the probe is going to bind right here. And so upstream of this restriction enzyme site, all of this we're not really going to have to worry about for this part of the assay. Uh, because it's going to get lopped off by the restriction enzyme and it'll never bind the probe, which binds down here. So we're never actually going to see this on the gel. So we're mostly concerned about this 15 kb piece of DNA. So let's look at first at their zero enzyme control well, which means they didn't add any DNAs. And so this is just a 15 kb long band that, as you might expect, is going to correlate to that whole 15 kb piece between these restriction enzymes. Of course, you have a probe bound right here, so you can see it on the gel and it's just going to be 15 kb. Across the top here we have the incubation times, 0 to 5 minutes, uh, with the DNAs. And so at 0 minutes, as you'd expect, you don't really get any cutting, and again you see only this 15 kb band. So as we start cutting, we have some bands start appearing. We have a 14.5 and a 14.0 kb piece of DNA. Right, so we're going to say it's 14.5 here. And this is going to be our 14.0. And so again, these are going to bind to our probe, just as before, so that we see them on the gel. And they're going to have cut here and here, which correspond to hypersensitivity sites. Remember, these cuts were made by DNAs. This one was made by the restriction enzyme. So we know, let's go red. So we know that we have a 14.5 and a 14 kb piece of DNA. Now let's look down here. We have another another band showing up at 8.4 kb. So that's going to sh uh, going to be right around here. 8.4 and it will also bind to our probe. So now let's look across the time course here. As time goes by, we see these higher bands getting a little less intense and the lower bands getting more intense. And so the reason for that is that each cut you make at 14.5 kb still has a hypersensitive site right here at 8.4. And so this band can get cut down to look like this band, and so over time you get more of the 8.4. Of course, as enough time goes by, you still have DNAs in here, and it's just going to cut it down to nucleotides, and you're going to lose uh, all of your signal. Okay, so this was their first uh, their first gel, and they labeled, they labeled these... Uh, um, whoops. They labeled these... Uh, pieces of DNA as 3A, f uh, 3B, and 4. So they did this again with another gel. You see right here, they produced another gel. This time they used a bagel, a bagel 2, bagel 3, nope, bagel 2 restriction enzyme, which cuts here and here. It also has cut sites down here, but remember, this is the probe they used, which only binds in this region, and so all of this over here we're not really going to have to worry about. Okay, and so let's look quickly uh, at what they got on this gel. So they have 12 and 11 kb bands, uh, just like before, right? Or uh, 12 and 11.5, right? And so those are going to be downstream of this, uh, or they're going to start with a restriction enzyme cut right here, and go uh, to a hypersensitive site here. This is going to be our 12 kb. And this is our 
Now again we have our probe, which now is this 3.3 kb Eco R1 probe that binds right about here, and it does overhang a little bit there, but that's okay. There's enough of it that it's still going to bind. Okay, and so this shows up in these two lanes here. And so they, they labeled these 3A and B, and these are the same, uh, this made from the same hypersensitive sites as in the previous assay. So they also labeled 3A and B. So next we're going to look at this one. They have a 7.5 kb band there. It's a little light, but it's there. So this is a 7.5. They labeled this one 2. Uh, and finally they have a 4.0. And I know there are other bands there. We'll talk about those in just a second. And this is a 4 kb. And they labeled this one 1. Okay, so I'm sure you're wondering what these other bands are and why I kind of glossed over them, uh, and reasonably so. Uh, so one of them, they have a, uh, a 5.8 kb band here. And the reason for that is that there's another bagel site, 5.8 kb upstream of this one. So there's another one right here. And so you're going to get a piece of DNA coming from here to here. And there's enough of an overhang with the probe, right, which can bind right there, that this is still going to show up on the gel. But this is not a DNA hypersensitive site. This is a uh, another bagel cut site. And so it doesn't correspond to a DNA hypersensitive site. Uh, finally, they get this other band at 6.8, uh, which is just hybridization to another, uh, another similar uh, piece of DNA in the genome uh, from the probe. And they said hybridization at higher stringency was able to eliminate that band. And so we'll take their word for it. And so let's look at the conclusions we can draw from this assay. This is what they were able to come up with. And so remember, they, they looked at each of, the, uh, each of the bands here. They have the 14.5, uh, 14, 14, and 8.4, which correspond to 3A, 3B, and 4. And so this is the 3A. Whoops. This is 3A, 3B, and 4. And then 1, 2... and 3A and 3B came from here. And so the conclusions they were able to draw was that there were, hypersens there were five hypersensitive sites in this piece of DNA upstream of this human globin gene. Uh, and they were able to tell exactly their locations based on uh, the location of the restriction enzyme sites. which they know exactly where on here they are. And so they could just uh, do some addition based on where those restric restriction enzyme sites were and see how long the pieces of DNA created were uh, that showed up on here. Okay, hopefully I was able to be helpful with this uh, and you understand this figure a little better. Uh, thank you very much and go blue.